Of all the Kithid, none has lost more throughout the centuries than Kith Galcian. Of the three strong religious forces on Kushan, Kith Galcian, Kith Somta, and Kith Faril, none were more radical than Kith Galcian. From the inception of Karakian civilization, Kith Galcian was a powerful force on Karak. The Galcian follow the will of Sajuk through the words of their Kith Sa. The Galcian believed that the Kushan were created to suffer on Karak. They believed that to deviate from the ancient, relatively primitive survival techniques would only create more suffering on Karak. The zeal of the Galcian was brought to the political forefront in the year 520. Kith Sidim and Kith Galcian clashed over their views of the will of Sajuk. This would be the beginning of a 300 year string of wars that would be known as the Heresy Wars. Throughout the Heresy Wars, Kith Galcian was one of the most powerful forces holding sway over vast amounts of land and vassalizing large kith, such as Kith Paktu. The Galcian's power would not be broken until the year 810, the end of the Heresy Wars. After 300 years of near constant war, a small kith emerged from hiding. This was Kith Nabal. The Nabel were the first kith to develop chemical explosives, None of the theological powers could combat this powerful force. The Kith Nabal ended the heresy wars, broke the Galcian power, and brought about the Age of Reason. After the heresy wars, the Galcian had been reduced to fewer than 30 vassal families, and they held only one city, Sajuka. Sajuka was the artistic gem of Karak. In its great temples and halls were most of the great works commissioned in the name of the god Sajuk. For years, this gem of Karak had been threatened by the encroaching sands. Only the complex system of sand dikes built by Kith Nabal protected the city. That is, until one fateful night. The Galcian Sa at this time was a man named Mirpat Galcian in what is only described as a single act of divine madness. The Galcian Sa called for the dikes protecting Sajuka to be destroyed. In only two days, the city was overwhelmed by the sands. Thousands died in the mass exodus from the city. The great works of art that made Sajuka so famous were lost forever to the sand. Seeing this atrocity, the Diamid called an emergency session. They denounced the actions of the Galcian and declared them to be outlaws, yet it hardly mattered. The Galcian had already fled into the Great Desert. For the next few centuries, the Galcian would be reduced to myth and legend. They would remain alone in the Great Wastes, that is, until the Coalition needed once more to feel Sajuk's wrath.